America, what's up, man? You already know what time it is, man. It's your favorite host in the world. It's King Maserati Santana, man. I'm out here riding for him. Vroom! Listen, Fayetteville, listen up, man. We got one of the wildest comedians in the building with us on the Rise TV. We in season four. I need for everybody to stop what they doing right now. Go subscribe to the channel on the Rise TV, not with an S, but with a Z. Subscribe to my page right now, man. It's every time we go live, we drop something fresh. Y'all are getting it. Also, find and follow me right now on Instagram, MozzieBreckin18. And Facebook, Mozzie Roddy Santana. I got the craziest comedian in the building with me. I can't introduce this man, so I'm going to let him introduce himself. Who we got? Oh, uh, man, it's your boy, uh, Charleston White. Uh, new stage name, uh, Rat Williams. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Cat Williams' comedic little brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Hey, Charleston, man, go ahead and tell everybody where to find and follow you at before we get started. Uh, the, the real Charleston White on YouTube, uh, Rat Williams underscore on Instagram. And uh, Charleston White fan page on Facebook. Absolutely. Now, I want to just get started, right, with your name changing. Yeah. What's up with the transition, brother? Uh, yeah, I want to I wanna create a, a new uh, a new uh, crime stopper uh, uh, character. Like, remember McGruff? Okay. Uh, uh, what's the one that stopped the fire in the woods? What's the motherfucking bar? You talking about Smokey? Smokey the bar. Uh, what did they have for Dara? Did they have a did they have a dog for Dara? Mm -hmm. Well, I want the Rat Williams to be the new Dara character uh for for uh, not just drugs, but also for crime stopping. So I want to create a, a new cartoon character that's a hero for uh not just snitching, but being an honest tattletaler. Right. Yeah. I'm a folly. Where you from? I'm from Fort Worth. Okay. Now, what is it like growing up from where you from? Uh I grew up in the boys' home. Uh, in a juvenile system. So I ain't grew up like regular kids. Yeah, so uh, it was fun, though. Facts. Yeah. Now, what, what what kind of experience did you experience from that? Uh, gang banging. Uh, but not only that, uh, uh, re-socialization programs, uh, uh, rehabilitative uh, uh, skills and tools uh, and coping mechanisms that, that come with being institutionalized. Okay, so you was a part of an organization? Uh, no, hell no. Nigga, we were goddamn kids in the boys' home. Nigga, half our mamas wasn't sending niggas no money. Uh, nigga was crying on Christmas. So, now I ain't never been a part of no organization. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But listen, man, thank you for coming on the Rise TV, chopping it up with me. Uh, we in season four. You you, you came in at a, uh, a clutch time. I would say that right before the holidays. Uh, you back in the Carolinas. Yeah. This is what, your second time being in the Carolinas? Uh, I've been to Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, I've been to Aiden. Uh, I've been to uh, Charlotte. So this is actually my fourth time. Okay. First time in Fayetteville. All right, what type of love you been getting since you've been out here? Uh, number of love. Facts. Yeah, yeah, number of love. Facts. Facts. So listen, man, we got to, uh, I, I I have to ask you about what, your, what, what is your take, your opinion on Gunna being re uh, released. What's up with that? How you feel about that? Uh, uh, most people don't know anytime you take a plea bargain. Uh, you cooperating uh, with 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 the state. Uh, if you say I'm guilty, and, and 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 it's a concert of you guys, meaning there's more than one one person, and you say I'm guilty, you also saying he guilty too. Mm -hmm. uh, he stood before the courts, uh, and we all heard the judge ask him, "So, sir, you saying you are in the gang, and that YSL is a gang? The only way they can have RICO charges if they say." their gang. So he gave the state the evidence with his confession of this being a gang and that he had participation in this gang. Uh that's 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 uh that's snitching. I was just about to ask you, is it classified as being snitching? Uh if y'all was all a part of a criminal organization and and, and, and y'all was all committing crime together, yes it's snitching. But it's also setting the record straight. Uh if, if 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 I'm a pimp and I'm in this organization and I'm a pimp, I'm fucking with hoes, you a killer. They a drug dealer. They bank robbers. When they get us for the organization, why I can't say, say, man, I just pimp hoes. I ain't shot now motherfucking gun. I don't even tote guns. I just kick bitches in the ass and keep all the goddamn money. Now, I may be wrong for that, but I ain't a killer. They the killers. Talk to the killers about this shit. That's setting the shit straight. Well, what is the difference between what he did and what Takashi Six Nine did? Do uh, you think it's something similar? Oh uh, no 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 no. Uh, to 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 Shaki, whatever that boy name Tekashi is. Takashi Six Nine. Yeah, Takashi Six Nine. He a Mexican. 
He a goddamn Mexican that wore rainbow color hair. How the fuck he get over here with these blood gang member killers? He ain't did nothing wrong. To Shocky Nine, boy, he did what anybody should do when you come from where he come from. He didn't grow up with y'all. Y'all was kidnapping him. Doing him how we do white boys. Y'all was fucking his baby mama. Uh, so when the feds get him and they say, hey, listen, listen to this. And they on the phone saying, yeah, nigga, I'm over here with his baby mama right now. Fucking shit out the bitch. And we set him up to be robbed. I'm supposed to be loyal to y'all? Let's, let's just be real. In the streets, we all down together. When they catch us, they go to playing phone record by, nigga, you fucking my baby mama. I'm supposed to keep the code? Is that what y'all saying? Ain't nobody honest enough to say he ain't done nothing wrong, nigga. They, they kidnapped the nigga. I find out y'all kidnapped me. I'm scared for my life, man. Please don't kill me, man. Please. Come on, man. We gonna fuck your dad, man. Please don't fuck me, dad, man. Please. Come on, man. I got all the money in the world. Where the goddamn money all, man? It's over there. Y'all done scared me to death. I, and it's y'all doing this to me. They come back and play you the tape. Say we had his ass scared as a motherfucker. Boy, we were tying him up. He was pissed on himself. Boy, I'm talking this nigga really a punk. So the fans come say this to you. And you saying, man, I ain't gonna snitch. Come on, homie. Let's be real. So let me hit y'all with some real shit. When the feds come get your girl, your baby mama, and she and they show them that motherfucking tape on her birthday, you with another broad at the mall. <laughs> on Christmas time, you shopping with another broad, or you and another broad that went out of town, and the feds come show your girl that tape. You think she ain't gonna say nothing? You think she ain't gonna say nothing? I think she would. Come on, homie, you been jumping on her. You been you you already been caught cheating. So why y'all placing these unrealistic rules and expectations on a nigga when if we all from the streets, right? Nigga, you ain't never ate at my mama table. Why I'm supposed to be loyal to you to the grave? You ain't never ate at my mama table. Why am I so loyal to you? Nigga, as a matter of fact, uh, I thought the first rule of this shit is there's no honor amongst these don't trust nobody mm. okay. I thought this is what we was taught so why when a nigga break the street rules nigga is, is, is saying man he wrong nigga why are we loyal to each other for one if, if me and, and let me just say this me and my co-defenders were none of us friends we were just some kids who decided one day, nigga, say, nigga, let's go steal some jackets out the mall. And the motherfucker come up dead. What's my loyalty to them niggas? I, I, didn't, I wasn't friends with them niggas last year. And this white man catch me. He said, I'm going to give you 40 years. My mama come in and say, son, did you shoot them people? No, ma'am, I didn't do it. And my mama tell the lawyer, my son ain't shot no goddamn body. What do you mean they trying to give him 40 years? What happened, son? Mama, I just want to steal some jackets. Look, my baby just want to steal some goddamn jackets. He ain't shot no goddamn body. So, nigga, come on, homie. Homie, we fucked up with this. So, from what I heard, Gunner ain't no, ain't no street nigga. He, he just a, he a player type nigga, pushing P, pushing P. The, 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 the dress worm nigga is the nigga that's banged King Slime. But see, that's why I was going to ask you. You know, do you think he was wrong for what he admitted to? If you go on with the streets, yeah, he wrong. Nigga, because if we all street, we don't admit to a motherfucking thing. Make them motherfuckers do their job and prove it. Well, Takashi six nine. He ain't street, homie. He a Mexican with niggas. When I don't give a fuck, homie. Cause when you go to jail, he can't be law to you. Still getting money. Just had a show in Dubai. Still getting money. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. This is a Mexican running with number niggas, and ain't no more Mexicans in this group. What make y'all think this Mexican is supposed to be loyal to all non-Hispanic people? Cause when he get with his people in her. He can't run with none of you niggas. So why should he be lawyer, nigga? Right now, let's just be truthful and honest, nigga. The Mexican plug telling on the black drug dealer. And the Mexican plug getting way less time than the niggas, the kingpin nigga in the hood. So why should you, why should a white man be loyal to a nigga? Why? 
So why do we, nigga, nigga, if I'm running with a bunch of Klansmen, nigga, I ain't law to them. If I'm running with the Italian mafia as a nigga, I ain't not the law to these Italians. So why would you expect this Mexican to have a loyalty to throw his life away for a bunch of niggas who ain't shit? Gang banging niggas. So he's not wrong for nothing he did against these black people. He did what he's supposed to do. Go against black people to save his own self. Now let's look at these niggas. They ain't supposed to do this one another. These niggas swore by death that we in this together. So if they get us, and I said, say, man, I want to take the plea bargain. I'm saying I'm guilty. They saying we in cahoots in concert by conspiracy. Once I say I'm guilty, shit, homie, you got to go to trial now. The rest of these niggas who ain't got young thug money, it's just like when the kingpin get caught, homie. Everybody looking at the kingpin saying, say, he the only one with a good lawyer. He got a damn good lawyer. But y'all don't. Mm -hmm. What they doing? She's gonna tell it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you say a loyalty, right? So, like, who is Charles and White loyal to? Uh, the cause. Mm. Yeah, I'm loyal to the cause. Uh, and that's the betterment of, of, of black people. It's the cause. That's a fact. Then you got Brittany Griner. She getting released from Russia. Yeah, man, the motherfucker about that. Talk one. to me about it. What's your take on it? Yeah, yeah, I feel like Paul Wheeler should have. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah. And then they they exchanged the motherfucker. Uh, uh. This motherfucker killed more people than 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 than, than more free throws than she'll shoot ever in, in, in her career. Mm -hmm. Uh got a movie about him on Netflix. Uh do you feel like she was held there illegally? Oh uh, no. Cause if a motherfucker says, say, nigga, I catch you peeing in my yard, I'm gonna shoot you. And uh, you get caught peeing in the yard and get shot. How you how that's wrong? So nigga, they was warned before she was even caught. Hey, man, y'all be careful mm -hmm. going over there. She bucked the system and still went. So let, let's let's look at it like this. A uh, 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 social justice mean nothing uh, to world affairs, right? Uh, what's going on in the streets of Iraq, what's going on in the streets of China, nigga, social justice mean nothing. Uh, she done something wrong in another country. You know how many people paying for something they done wrong in another country? I'm going to say it again, Paul Wheeler, and they say he was a spy. So, so let me just break this down. Russia is losing this war with Ukraine because America is going to, to great extents to help uh, arm Ukraine to beat Russia. Mm -hmm. So they're getting them money, they're getting them weapons, they're getting them everything. Russia don't have great technology for, for, for war weaponry, right? So they're losing this war because they don't have the weapons to beat Ukraine. Nobody thought Ukraine would be able to beat Russia. He don't want to blow up the world. He don't, he threatening, yeah, I'm going to use nuclear. So she's always been a, a, a political pawn for, for this war, right? So, okay, let the bitch go. But hold up. We need that motherfucker that can get us them weapons. Because that's why America got him. Exactly. America got this motherfucker over here, gave him all this time, because he was given weapons that can destroy America. So here it is. We losing this war. We got something that'll make this president look good. The gay people can't. So, man, listen. He can get us some weapons. Let the bitch go, but we want him. So we need help with some weapons. Soon as he get out, say, we need you back on it, man. Call such and such here, you can get them goddamn men. Call, come on, homie. We we could have got way more for him. But black people clapping. Yeah, when you got a Chinese school teacher uh, <laughs> teaching your kid Russian and, and, and your beef processing plants, because Russia owns a lot of America beef processing plants. 
a, a Russian own a lot of part of Miami, homie. Russian own a lot of strip clubs. Man, they got a lot of man. They own a lot of rapper niggas. And uh, you think these white boys is behind these record labels? Niggas be big time Russian mafia motherfucker. Uh, oh, one thing about foreigners, they know you can't and you can't beat America from coming outside in. Uh, man, people came here a long time ago to destroy America. From the start uh, with. Yeah, man. So it, it's gonna co- it erupt. So so when when you hear politicians saying, "God damn it, Russia was meddling in our elections," uh, that's true, and they know it. Right. Uh, Russia, Russia, uh, uh, Russia is is a, is a country that can. They're kind of like America, homie. They can spy on anybody. Uh, man, that motherfucking president over there got something on everybody. Uh, they was able to tap into to uh, uh, America's uh, social media network. That's why America's saying, "Say, God damn it, we don't we want to shut TikTok down." Man, the motherfucking Chinese getting our motherfucking ass. <laughs> uh, remember everybody was changing their motherfucking face on Facebook. Yeah, seeing what they looked like when they were twenty years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was Russia. Uh. <laughs> uh I ain't gonna keep talking too deep. They'll kill a nigga for talking like this. So, uh, so listen, right? So, uh, do y'all wonder why y'all don't see no more niggas getting their ass kicked in police stations? You don't see no more police shootings. You don't see no more black people getting mistreated online. You don't see none of this shit no more. Nigga, George, that shit that happened to George Floyd didn't happen when we saw it. It had already happened. Mm-hmm. Do y'all wonder why all of a sudden this shit have disappeared? You don't see it no more. Russia pulled back. They did that to shape the election. Uh, how we don't know nothing. So you, so you, I mean, but I'm just saying, like, so how you feel about her being released now, though? You, she well on her way. She can jump back into her life. What's going on? That bitch ain't fit to jump back into her life. Man, that whole fucked up nine months in a Russian prison. Man, y'all don't even know if this the real Britney. So it's a clone. I don't know what it is. Y'all don't know what the bitch is. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> bitch just ain't fit to be gone in no motherfucking Russian prison and then had to endure the kind of horror and terror she done had to endure. I mean, it seems like a lot of people getting released now. Man, you lying not from no Russian prison. No, nah, homie, that's a whole different kind of world, homie. That ain't, that ain't, this ain't no kind of jail we can even imagine, homie. Mm. Man, you don't know what that little bitch finna go through. That bitch psychologically fucked up. Her pussy probably don't even get wet no more. For it gonna take a while for her to just jump back into her regular life. She hollering, she wanna play basketball. She gonna have a psychological nervous breakdown on the basketball court. Why you think they took her to a military facility, homie, and they just now letting her leave? She got to be debriefed, see if they done. Man, come on, homie, they don't know what they done done to her. At least we don't. Mm-hmm. And we'll never know. Well, listen, man, I'm going to take a pause on Britney real quick. I want to know more about Charleston White. I want to know how the comedian came out of you, though. What's, uh, how, did you get, how did you get on that uh, platform? Y'all tricked me to be funny, nigga. I didn't think I was funny. I came <laughs> on her talking about some serious shit, and motherfucker was laughing. And so a nigga whispered in my ear and told me, say, nigga, you know, the greatest truth ever told was told as a joke. The greatest joke ever told was told as the truth. Motherfucker can't really digest the truth, so they got to laugh to laugh the truth off. So I just tell the truth and make it sound funny, and it don't be funny at all. Motherfuckers start laughing, so that's why you hear me say, I mean, you motherfuckers tricked me into being a comedian. Nigga, I ain't never wanted to be no motherfucking comedian. Nigga, I was the class clown that could fuck all the pretty girls from elementary school to middle school. Now, with you jumping into the comedian game, do you respect some of these comedians? Oh, uh, no. Nah. I don't, nah, don't respect none of these niggas. Days, yeah, I don't respect this shit. Uh, yeah, this ain't nothing but a con, man. A comedian just like a bullshit-ass warehouse working nigga. Then kiss the ass to, you, you know, get somewhere and he know somebody. Uh, nigga, I respect the people that's laughing. Yeah, yeah, I respect the people that laughing, but the niggas sitting up telling the jokes, I don't give a damn about him. Yeah, 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 no. Nah, so you ain't got no comedians look you, you you look up to? No I, d- I used to. I ain't now one of them niggas putting no arm around me and hugged me and told me, welcome to the comedic world. Uh, ain't now them through no alley hoop. Them niggas act like they don't want me in. So, now nah, I come to niggas say, fuck all comedians. I don't want to be friends with nobody. Damn. Yeah, yeah, I won't be friends with nobody. You don't want to be friends with rappers? Nah, fuck a rapper. Nah, nah, nigga. I want to be friends with the mamas that's sitting down in visitation that's going to that motherfucking vending machine with that clear bag of coins or nickels, dimes, and quarters going to go nigga get a nigga a snickers, some Skittles, a honey bun, two motherfucking sodas, a bag of chips, and one of them motherfucking beef jerkies during the visitation. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't give a damn about nobody else. Listen, you okay? Look, so we we get on the rappers, right? Because I know how you feel about rappers. Yeah. Before we get started talking about any of that, I want you to just tell me, enlighten me on the story when you was at Rolling Loud. Oh, uh, my mind, my bro. business. Yeah, now nah, listen, people think, man, he knew what he was going to, but I didn't know what I was going to. Uh, yeah, now nah, man, I was, yeah, I was bullshitting out there, man. Uh, fucking with my partner them for his birthday, mm-hmm. and and uh, uh, I was on the strip taking pictures. Uh, and a nigga walked by and said, man, why y'all taking pictures with that bitch ass nigga? Nigga, look, man, who was that nigga? Yeah, man, why he a fucking snitch? Man, yeah, he dissed my fucking homie, Slim 400. And nigga told me, what's up? I'm trying to ignore the nigga. He steady walking back. Yeah, what's up? They tell him, man, come on, man, this guy's like Martin Luther. He's not no motherfucking Martin Luther King. What's up? So uh, I reached my hand in my pocket. And I flinch at the nigga to see if he go throw a deuce up, see if he really wanted to fight. So I would go mace him. So then he leave and come back. And next thing you know, yeah, baby, get him. Yeah, baby, get him. Now he acting like he want to fight. So I said, oh, man. So uh, that's when I found out I was at Rolling Lab. So the next morning, it didn't dawn on me what Rolling Lab was. I'm saying, say, homie, let's get some tickets to this Rolling Lab shit. So my nigga said, well, shit, nigga, let's go, get, go up here and get, I need to get a pair of shoes. So we catch the Uber to the shoe store. And, uh, yeah, I, I was with my little mama. And uh, all of a sudden she said, uh, Durgo Soldier Boy. Now, I know I done said something about the nigga. <laughs> but I don't think the nigga fight mad. Yeah, yeah, I don't think the nigga fight mad. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh... All them niggas get out the van. So niggas said, man, he lying. It wasn't no 12 niggas. It was close to, let me see, only at least 10. Yeah, yeah. About 10 of them. Because it's that big black sprinter. <coughs> it's that big black sprinter van. The two niggas stayed in. Both of them niggas were big. Uh, the one nigga with the gun, he had a mask on. So Soldier Boy walk up. And I'm trying to process this shit in my mind, like, man, how this shit fit to go? And I'm saying, man, shit, nigga ain't fighting, man. Not in my mind, nigga ain't fighting. I ain't done nothing to no nigga right. to warn no ass whooping from no nigga. Uh, so, but I noticed every nigga got out the car, got out and tied their shoes up. I'm saying, well, uh, in my mind, I'm saying, that ain't no good sign, nigga. nigga every nigga been down tying their shoes up, they trying to get some traction. You right. know, that kind of shit. Uh, Soon nigga walk up and say, man, uh, I want to talk. But the body language, ain't no nigga smiling, ain't no nigga. If a nigga want to talk, nigga saying when he get out the van, say, nigga, what's the say? I need to talk to you. He ain't saying nothing. Mm. So uh, in my mind, I done already painted one way how this go go. Because you got to be thinking on your feet. You gotta mm-hmm. know how to, so I done already painted one picture. He go say, let's talk. And I'm blind over here. A nigga go, boom. Boom, and it's over with. You hear me? Right. It could go that way. Or I could overreact and mace him. So I took the second thought, just mace him. Maybe he want to talk, maybe he don't. Mace him. So you keep mace on him? Yeah, yeah, I keep, yeah, I keep mace. I keep all kind of weapons. Mm. Yeah, y'all don't know how no man walking around on earth, homie, uh, with just his bare hand <coughs> uh, in the United States of America. Yeah, so now I, I keep I keep a knife. Uh, I got an ink pen knife. Uh, I'm trying to get that motherfucker me remote control key gun that Rambo got. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, nigga, hell yeah, I keep some weapons. And when you hear shit like that, you, you went to Rolling Loud, you know you said something about Soulja Boy, you hear shit like that, people want to come at Charleston White. Well, what you think about people, how they feel about you? Do you give I them don't, that? no. You don't know. care? Now, could they owe somebody some money? The same people who don't like what I say done borrow some money from somebody and ain't paid them people back. The same people who don't like what I say got a kid somewhere across town and they baby mama say way worse about them than what they don't like I say about they rapper. Because the nigga only mad about what I'm saying about the culture. Because I don't know. All the niggas mad at me. I don't know these niggas. I don't know now a nigga mad at me. So why would you be mad at a nigga you don't know about what he done said Cause you chose to watch him. I don't never ask for a nigga to watch me. Nigga, nigga got to come look for me, and I'm shadow banned. 
So you got to go look through some shit to see me. So now, homie, I don't give a fuck. Homie, listen, I kill you by confronting me by what I said. Because my country give me a right to free speech. And you go violate my free speech. You still think we got freedom of speech in America? Shit, I do. Maybe y'all don't, but I do. If you want a YouTube check, you don't. If you want to you keep your Instagram account, you don't. I don't give a fuck about none of that. I just lost the Instagram. Now, I lose YouTube. Now, now those people don't have freedom of speech, but I do. Mm-hmm. And I exercise it every day. Against gang members, against politicians, whoever I think is wrong, I exercise my free. So, yeah. Yeah. So, with these rappers, bro, like, how, how can we... One thing we got to do when we got artists, we got rappers. I know how you feel about them. Yeah. But what can we do? How can we help them with painting the wrong picture? How they affect our culture? Uh, you turn kids against them. You make kids hate them. Uh, you make kids do them uh, like they do their ops, want to kill them. What's an op? I don't know. Somebody they hate. Somebody they hate something you hate. So you make kids hate rappers and despise them. And when they come around, man, fuck them bitch-ass rap niggas. Let's get them and attack them. Yeah, we some, hey, we as a community should start attacking rappers and killing them. Literally taking their life for the pausing that they feed us. Now, is that with all rappers, though? All rappers. All of them. All of them. All rappers ain't the same. All, all of them the same. I ain't never seen one that's not the same. What do you think they talk about? Whatever they talk about, it's all the same. They all have to go to that same white boy. They all have to get a beat. They all have to have an image. They all have to have a name that don't go with their real name. They all the same. My thing is, us as people, the rappers too, we trapped inside. It's like prison of I'm materialism. Not, I ain't. You know, you, you can't even, how is they getting changed before they get dental health? You know, insurance on themselves. That's a choice. It's a choice. Yeah, that's a choice. Uh, Obama got free Obamacare. Uh, everybody know when you become a rapper, it ain't no health insurance with rapping. But if you go get your job over there at the plant, it's some health insurance. If you get a job down there at the motherfucking oil field, it's some health insurance. Nigga, you chose to come over here and rap. We don't need to help you do nothing. You chose that. Ain't nobody helping your mama. Ain't nobody helping your mama with what she doing. She the one feeding the baby. Why you? Why we got to help you niggas? You niggas is destroying the community. And when you niggas get through rapping, what are y'all doing in the community when y'all ain't rapping? Still destroying it. So why we need to help y'all? We need to destroy y'all. Now, nah, nigga, we need to be setting y'all up like PMB. Like we need to every now, you niggas need to be getting set up robbed. Your entourage need to be attacked. Because nigga, you niggas are the who do the black woman worse than the rapper in his lyrics. You niggas ain't made a love. I need a love song in a long motherfucking time. What do you think? I mean, so that bothers you how rappers talk about black women? Oh uh, well, it, it bothers me because I know rappers is some of the most fakest, weakest niggas amongst black men, white men, Mexican men, Asian men, Chinese men. But they standing up on stage talking like they the toughest. You get a rapper to go into the neighborhoods and say, "Who broke into my goddamn car?" Nigga, fuck you. Nigga, I, he, he, he won't nobody be quiet. You can't put a rapper in a room for the G niggas and he start talking and the G niggas be quiet. Nobody would take a rapper serious if he go back to his hood. Strip the rappers of his entourage and let that nigga stand by his motherfucking self and talk loud in the neighborhood and see how far he goes. So you don't believe none of these rappers is talking about their actual life is all exaggeration, just uh, chasing dreams. Well, this is what I'm saying. Nigga, I don't give a damn what you're saying on that record. What do you do in this neighborhood after you get through talking on that record? Who are you to these people around here? Your mama, your baby mama, your kids, the school teacher, the principal, the po- Who are you to them people? Fuck what you're saying on, on your real life because you got to dress it up up on here. You can't dress it up over here. See, you come to dress it up over here. Yeah, you can't dress this shit up over here. When you ain't been over there and picked up that motherfucking kid now, visitation weekend, you hollering by child support there. It also it also give you a weekend to pick that motherfucker up too. You ain't went to now weekend to pick that motherfucker up. It also give you an alternate summer to go get the baby. It also give you an alternate Christmas. She get it every first, third, and there them days. 
No, nigga, talk about when you nigga was in prison with that G shit. This homie you know just fucking these boys, nigga, but because he done killed the nigga, he whooped nigga, won't nobody say what he doing. I, no, when he come back out here, he all right. But he was in her fucking bar. Matter of fact, make us a rap song about how you niggas didn't fuck a punk in prison. Tell us how you made it 10 years. What did you do, homie, to not have sex with a man in prison? Did you ever think about it? So you, you sitting here telling me a man that done did two years, a whole dime in prison. You think he had some encounters? I ain't, I ain't know what he did. I'm asking you, how did you do not to have no encounter? Did you ever think about it? You don't talk about it. They don't talk about it. Niggas don't talk about, man, I had to jack off every day. Man, I looked at the punk and I thought about doing it. I had one nigga, one nigga come out of prison and say, say, hey, nut, cuz. I almost went there. Nigga did 20 years from the time he was 12, 13 years old, 20 flat years. He said, nah, nut, cuz, I almost went there, but I didn't go there. My brother said, say, nigga, we almost had a ride over your nigga trying to break one of them Mexican pelvic bone. I said, nigga, what you talking about trying to fuck one of them Mexican? They stabbed him all in the head. That's the only nigga I ever had come out of prison. Said, nigga, I thought about it. I almost went there and I didn't. Rest of these niggas play like, man, I ain't nigga. Nah, come on, homie, let's be real. Because your nature is the eating fuck. How did you, how did you suppress that side of your nature, tough ass nigga? Yeah, because everybody wasn't putting no prison guards fucking no hoe in prison. It's a hoe. I know a whole lot of niggas was knocking hoes down there. A whole lot of niggas wasn't. They ain't got the conversation. They got the hand, but they ain't got the conversation to talk this guard to bring no motherfucking phone and no pussy for him and give his another nigga some pussy because he been in prison 18 years as a virgin. I don't know too many niggas got that kind of game. So how did you not fuck a punk when your mama wasn't sending you no money, your bitch don't send you no money? Come on, nigga. And you niggas playing an extortion game, scurring nigga, give me, scurring nigga. Hum, come on, hum. And you didn't sneak and put that dick in nobody's booty. Come on, talk to us in these <laughs> lyrics. Come rap about that kind of shit, nigga. That's what we want to hear. We sick of all the tough guy shit. So what about when your mama died? Because I know a nigga mama died in there, grandmama died in there, and he didn't get to go to now funeral. Sister got molested in there. He didn't get to, Come on, let's talk about this. Mm. When you got out, you find out your daughter was molested, nigga, by the stepdaddy. You come on, homie, let's talk about this. Half you niggas getting out molesting too, cause you been in there playing the jack boy game. You nigga been jacking off on women who prison guard. She just walking by side in the door. You niggas jacking your dick off, and when she look in your eyes, you calm like you done fuck her, and you do this every day. All of a sudden, you get released. You come back to society. You go to your sister house. She got a 16, 17-year-old niece. Fine in the motherfucker. What you doing, boy? What y'all doing, niggas? Jacking off, looking at them little girls. Don't let her friends come over and go to making eye contact with you perverted ass niggas. Let's rap about that kind of shit, nigga. Where them songs at? Because it's happening. If you go look at the CPS files. If you go look at some of these little boys who've been, who done caught a capital murder case, nigga, and now you looking at their CPS file, they were fucked by their uncle. Nigga, what? Turn another page, he was fucked by his other uncle. Nigga, there's some shit out here you niggas ignoring. But I know it's there, nigga, because I work with the youth. Man, it seems like a lot of people mad with you, but you just come to set the record straight. Man, that's it. I just come to tell the truth. The greatest truth ever told was told as a joke. So everybody want me to be a comedian because I, a comedian, cause I come in with this truth. Unscripted, uh, brutal, un, y'all, I'm unapologetic, homie, because I, I'm a nigga that's been working with kids. Young niggas who kill people. I grew up with niggas who kill people. So, nigga, I'm saying, okay, this is the killer side of it. Everybody done tricked these niggas. Every, the, the killer's been tricked, homie. The tough niggas been tricked. That's why it ain't no more niggas who brush their hair all day and talk to girl, and he just fly, a fly nigga who fuck with girl. Everybody gangster with a gun now. And when you find out, you go to tell any nigga, well, go join the military, man. I ain't really go, nigga, I thought you were gangster with a gun. Then you find out, well, shit, nigga, go to jail, man. I ain't want a nigga. Who want to go to jail? Gangster niggas. <laughs> Tough niggas. That's them niggas don't mind going. Soon as the police pull them over, man, take me to jail. Niggas won't explain what rights they got now. When that shit start happening? <laughs> niggas on the side of the motherfucking street with the police arguing about what rights they Man, take me to jail so I hear if you're born out call, uh -huh. so I can call this bitch and get out of jail. Fuck you, white boy. Where them niggas at? So, man, I'm saying, nigga, we, somebody got to come out, man, and, 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 and tell the whole truth 
and nothing but the truth. So help us God. Yeah. You know, uh, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I'm, I, I'm going to bring it up because, bring you know. Up, nigga. We, I'm open to everything. Uh, I seen you on the Ugly Me, uh, the Ugly Money Nietzsche uh, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was up there. You was up there. Shout out to Nietzsche, too. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you had, like, things going back and forth with T.I. son. Like, what was the whole deal with that? That little motherfucker ugly. That little ugly mouth motherfucker uh, said he'll kick my ass, him and his cousins, if I come to Atlanta. Uh Y'all see a kid. I see a grown motherfucker that white boy give a, a life sentence to. He 19 years old. Out of, yeah, yeah. So when he made some threats upon me, uh, my only response is is to self-defend myself. Uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I kick his daddy ass. That's all I know. Wow. And I was talking to his daddy uh, by way of Boosie because they were tripping with Kanye West about the White Lives Matter shirt. Mm. So as I was addressing him, saying, Boosie, uh, nigga, your son is more likely to be shot by the police. Your son and T.I. son, them two little motherfuckers just got arrested. Uh, so, uh, yeah, them little niggas responded. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, my mind, uh, nigga, you can get it. You little nigga can get it, too. Nigga, little grown motherfuckers. Yeah, y'all can get it, too. Uh, because y'all out of line. And, and so I'm the type of uh, old nigga in the community if I'm down at the store, uh, away from my house and your house, and your son do something in the neighborhood, I'm gonna say something to him. Mm. Yeah, yeah, nah. I see some young niggas at the bus stop fighting around the corner. I pull the car, say, man, what y'all, man, y'all stop that shit right. Yeah, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm the nigga that's cor I correct the neighborhood. Uh, and, and if your daddy come down here fucking with me by by me correcting you, then uh, uh, I'm willing to deal with what with, with come, you know, with me correcting you. Understandable. I hear you. Listen, I just thought it was crazy. Oh, uh, I did that too. You, you would get out there and you 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 would tussle with his nineteen year old. Uh, yeah, he threatened me, homie. Uh, I'll tussle with a twelve year old if he threatened me. Damn. Uh, homie, I know a twelve year old that killed somebody. They got a ten year old. He just killed his mother because she wouldn't buy him a game. They got a fourteen year old just killed. Uh, two women in his household, and when they looked at his social media pages, everything about him was so. Nigga, y'all play with these? Yeah, yeah, not nah, home. I grew up in a system with children who kill people. My first roommate was a kid out of Conroe, Texas, who killed his mother and his father. Killed his mother and his father. Mm. So you goddamn right, I tussle with a motherfucking kid, nigga. Shit, you lying to me? Shit, I know some niggas 14, 15 year old to kick their motherfucking uncle's ass if he come in trying to tell them something about something, nigga, and he got a little size on him. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to protect Charles and White. Uh, well, uh, uh, I'm willing to die, kill, and, and go to jail for, for my beliefs. Good question. What do you believe in? Uh, what's right and, and, and what's wrong. At the end of the day, that's what life's about, right and wrong, good and bad. Anything outside of that, I think is bullshit. Who right? Okay. Who wrong? Okay. And then we go, we go from now. So we speaking about the community. Uh, you grew up in the system. So now that you are out, you're the man who you are today, what, what, what are some of the things that you do for the community? How you give back to the community? <clears throat> Shit, nigga. Uh, man, I've been working in the community for over 10 years to this day. I was just in a high school. Uh, doing a, a TikTok challenge that went national wide, partnering with the uh, 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 prosecutor's office, the sheriff's office, uh, the juvenile judges. Uh, did a TikTok challenge, man. Uh, put the guns down. We was getting away a thousand dollars. Another high school homie. We do a, a book challenge where I challenge the kids to read uh, the New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. Uh, which talks about the one in three statistical data uh, in America. Uh, we give away money for that. Uh, man, I'm doing a toy drive uh, annually, man. Uh, I take single mothers shopping for Christmas, uh, backpack school supplies. Uh, I work on capital murder, death penalty cases, uh, robbery cases, uh, sexual assault cases with young black males who get in trouble. Uh, shit, I'm, you, man, youth development. Uh, gang intervention, gang prevention, uh, shit, you name it, homie. Uh, and the reason why I asked that, not to cut you off, the reason why I asked you to enlighten me on that, and not only you enlighten me, you enlighten America, the whole platform, people always look at 
the wildest things that you say with your opinions. But do they really know who Charleston White is? Uh, they don't need to uh, because everybody know actions speak louder than words. Uh, if you think you can watch a celebrity and think you know that celebrity, you're a goddamn fool. If you think you watch me and, and the things I say, you know me. And I done came on the internet a thousand times and said, hey, y'all, I'm in character. Nigga, I done got online and said I rape white women. And then the next week be publicly live in schools. So I know people pick and choose what they want. Uh, man, actions speak louder than words. Mm hmm uh, and, and that's the problem with most American, most black people. They sitting around listening to a motherfucker talk. <laughs> they sitting around listening to a motherfucker talk. After they get through listening to a motherfucker talk, they go somewhere talking. And ain't nobody doing a motherfucking thing. See, I'm getting paid for this. All the motherfucker with an opinion. Homie, I came to the internet not to uplift black people. I don't give a fuck about black people, my nigga. I'm looking for my kind. That's white people. That's Mexicans. That I ain't looking for all black people because if they, if we looking for that nigga, we might as well commit suicide right now. If you looking to go be somewhere and it's all black, kill yourself right now, nigga, because you are committing suicide. We ain't got nothing to sustain us. We ain't got an economical system, no banks, no banking system, no airline, no grocery store, no import, export, trade. Re we ain't got nothing. Nigga, what the fuck I'm going to go lose for? I'm looking for my kind. And the kids I work with, I said, say, little homie, nigga, stop looking for black people to help you, nigga. God can't use us. Our hearts is too hardened. God can't use today's black people to help black people. It's going to be white people, nigga, to open the door. So I teach young brothers, don't listen to that nigga. Don't listen to that Hebrew nigga. Don't listen to that Muslim nigga. Don't listen to that rapper nigga. He can't open no doors. He ain't got no keys to nothing. He at the bottom of the boat, nigga, with the holes in it where it's sinking. He ain't nowhere up top steering no motherfucking ship. I tell white people, say, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, sir. Don't let your lack of blackness stop you from reaching that black boy. You can relate to him as a baby, as a boy. Relate to his pain. Look past the color. Say, man, listen. These today's black people will suffer worse than what the slaves did. Not because of what they've done, but because of what they do. The white man ain't going to suffer for what he done, nigga. He made it right when he started teaching your kids how to read without your help. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> America, tap in, man. Hey, listen. So, with that being said, you into the comedian game now. You already... Have you did any shows? I noticed you was in Greensboro. Yeah, yeah, sold out. Uh, sold out BT weekend in Atlanta. Uh... Shit, Greensboro, Greenville. Uh, I'll be in Columbia tomorrow, man. Uh, South Carolina. I got like 15 more of the dates. Houston, uh, Philly, Baltimore, uh, New Jersey, Atlantic City, at uh, the Showboat Hotel, uh, D.C. Okay. Uh, me in Memphis, Orlando, shit, Dallas. Uh, yeah, I got shit. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah nigga, I done tapped in. Facts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I... I do want to ask you one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Before we wrap things up, because I got to know how Nick, you, you got, We got some good content, man. I, yeah. Yeah, shit. Absolutely. Uh, Nigga won't let me go in character. He got some good questions on me, too. He would not let <laughs> He would not let me go in character. That's a fact. <laughs> nah, we just, it, you know, it was just a it was just a tragic moment that we lost a, you know, uh, a good artist, man, take off, RP to take off. But your whole perspective of, you know, the situation on how he died, any words uh, for me? Yeah, it was fucked up. Uh, how many more losses we have to take? Uh, first thing I did, man. Uh, my phone was blowing up, so I had a lot of people hitting me up. Uh, but because of my relationship with Sykes, uh, and you know some of the messages, uh, you know we had transpired back and forward, you know to the Migos, and you know just extending love to one another. Uh, y'all showed my nigga some love. Or I didn't share my opinion. But then I got a phone call from somebody who was actually there that night. 
uh, and, and I, I'm just gonna say this, homie. Uh, the nigga that called me, y'all hear on that phone. He was called her for him, right? Uh, my nigga is a professional dice shooter. My nigga shoot, yeah. So he was called her. Say, man, these Migo niggas in the town, they coming to come break them on the dice, right? So he was up close and personal when this happened. Uh, so when he shared what he shared, homie, uh, it 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 gave me clarity in, in, in a revelation uh, that we don't get to pick when it's our time to die. That's a fact. Uh, nah, homie. Uh, so. Every time somebody die, I keep posing the question, who convinced us and told us that death was a bad thing? You don't get to pick how you're born. You don't get to pick your parents. You don't get to pick uh, the situation. You don't get to pick the circumstances that you're born into. So, nigga, you don't get to pick the circumstances in the situation in which you leave this earth. Uh, nigga, who said death was a bad thing? Uh, man, that nigga died of uh, one of the, one of the, one of the greatest groups that 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 have ever be known in, in hip hop. If not, nigga, next to the Beatles. So, uh, wow. whether whether he lived to be fifty or a hundred, his accomplishment in that little short of time, homie, he had one of the greatest groups next to the Beatles. Come on, homie, job well done. That's crazy. I mean, the Migos. Comparing think, them to the Beagles. That's think crazy. about nigga, what, what nigga? Come on, homie. Uh, yeah, they, them was them three cold little niggas, homie. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah. yeah, that's a fact, man. Well, listen, man, that's gonna wrap it up for us, though. But listen, man, Charles the right. Please tell them exactly where to find and follow you at. One more time, Oh, uh, man, just go follow this motherfucking On The Rise TV, R-I-Z, not with a S E, uh, and then listen to this whole motherfucker, and then you can follow me from what I said on that motherfucker. That's what it is. Definitely appreciate you chopping it up with me. You know what oh, I'm man, saying? I love it, black man. My man, What's that's up? what it black is, Black love man. is black power, man. Absolutely, man. I am your host, Maserati Santana. Don't forget to put the king in front of it, man. This is season four on The Rise TV. Subscribe to that channel, man, on The Rise. That's with a Z, not with a S. You know what I mean? Tap in, find and follow me, Mazi Bracken 18 on Instagram, and Maserati Santana on Facebook. So you already know what it is, man. We had Charleston right in the building, man. The wildest comedian we know so far, man. So let's get it going, man. Make sure y'all tap in with me next week. You already know. Until next time, love, peace, happiness. Let's get it. Yeah, boy, you show asking him to spell a whole bunch of shit.